Mr. Bruno Sammartino. Scheduled to open up things here, Bruno, among other greats, will be seeing the likes of Ted DiBiase. I think all the fans are very impressed with DiBiase events. This fellow's proving out to be a real, real champion, the North American champion, a great one. What about Flying Fred Curry? Well, Flying Fred Curry is an appropriate name for this guy because he can do that ring like nobody else can, Vince. I'm very, very impressed with him, as I'm sure all the fans are. We shall return with the opening contest involving Ted DiBiase in just a moment. Welcome to another action-packed card of All-Star Wrestling. These matches are sanctioned and supervised by the State Athletic Commission. Chief Deputy Commissioner is Nick Santoro. Timekeeper at the bell, Bill Sands. The attending physician is Dr. George Zaharian. The referees for the hour are Dick Worley and Dick Kroll. And I'm your ring announcer for All-Star Wrestling, Gary Capetta. The first match in the ring is set for one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing in the corner to my left, from Jersey City, New Jersey, weighing 271 pounds, John Schmidt. And his opponent, from Omaha, Nebraska, weighing 250 pounds, the North American champion, Ted DiBiase. Ted DiBiase takes on Big Mr. Schmidt. We're set for the action to commence. John Schmidt polished off by Ted DiBiase. Let's get the official time, if we may. The time of the match, 38 seconds, and your winner, Ted DiBiase. Ted DiBiase victorious. We shall return with Flying Fred Curry. The following event is set for one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing in the corner to my left, from Puerto Rico, weighing 237 pounds, Gypsy Rodriguez. And his opponent, from Hartford, Connecticut, 236 pounds, flying Fred Curry. Fred Curry against the Gypsy, Frank Rodriguez. Here we go. Rodriguez off the rope again. Fred Curry over him again and brings him right back down. Drop kick by Curry. Rodriguez all on the outside of the ring. And Curry really connected with that drop kick. Brings him in the hard way. Flying head scissor. Curry's a house of fire, Bruno. Yes, he is. Uh, flying Fred Curry is certainly an appropriate name. Now, when he was outside the ropes, Rodriguez, and to come up over the ropes to that flying head scissor, that's really leaping up there, Vince. It was beautifully executed. Fred Curry with things in control at the moment. Referee over to make sure that's not a choke. It obviously is not. 
He's satisfied with that, and he says Russell. Rodriguez having his problems countering, however. Rodriguez using the back door, and comes out. Curry shoulders on the canvas. Not for long. Rodriguez flies through the air again. He set him up with the monkey flip, Vince, really good. He let him think he was getting uh, getting his legs loose, but he just shoved him right off and caught him with that monkey flip. And he just, I think, uh, misled Rodriguez and let him think he actually was breaking out of it by himself. Curry whooped to the buckle. The elbow finds a mark as well. Rodriguez taking over at the moment. Gets flying Fred Curry. Curry retaliating, likes to use the fisticuffs. Up kick back Curry. Another one caught him in the chest. Curry off the rope now. Flying body press. One, two, and it's lights out. Brett Curry doing just that, flying around the squared circle, victorious over Frank Rodriguez. The time of the match, two minutes, 35 seconds, and your winner, Flying Fred Curry. Flying Fred Curry, victorious as we outlined before. Scheduled up next, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be showing you, of course, a very interesting interview. To follow that, we will be taking you back in time. Take you back to when Chief Jay Strongbow took on Greg Valentine. Everyone knew it was going to be an extraordinary match, and we're happy to present this again on All-Star Wrestling. It was an event not likely uh, to be forgotten uh, anytime soon, Bruno. Well, the fans will never forget it, certainly, but neither will Strongbow, because knowing Strongbow as we do, Vince, he is a determined man. He wants to get well, he wants to get back into that ring, and he wants to get Valentine. And I'll tell you something, knowing the determination of um, Jay Strongbow, I'll tell you something, as severe as the injury is, we're going to see him back, and he's going to come back, and he's going to... Because right now he's, he's uh, recuperating, he's in bad shape still, but the worst thing about him, of course, is, is that he is waiting, and he'll be back, and he'll be back better than ever. And we shall be back with the Jay Strongbow match and lots more wrestling action when All-Star Wrestling continues. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the North American Heavyweight Wrestling Champion, Mr. Ted DiBiase. And we like to officially, although you've been welcomed many, many times by the fans and by the officials, but uh, ex again, we extend uh, an official welcome to the Worldwide Wrestling Federation. Well, Vince, thank you very much. And I'd like to give a special thanks to the wrestling fans in this area because uh, at, upon coming into this area, they have been just a very, very super to me. They've welcomed me wholeheartedly, and I'd like to thank them all very much. And the big thing that brings me to the WWF is the fact that they have recognized my North American heavyweight title and I've wrestled all over the United States and abroad and you can go anywhere in professional wrestling and ask any wrestler where the competition is. If you want to get a true test of your skills and your ability in professional wrestling, they'll say go wrestle in the World Wide Wrestling Federation if you want to wrestle the best and that's exactly why I'm here. Why don't you give us a little history uh, on yourself and also uh, on the North American Heavyweight Championship? Well, I actually grew up in professional wrestling. My father, the late Mike DiBiase, was a professional wrestler for some 20 years. He was a uh, an amateur champion at the University of Nebraska, national champion. As a matter of fact, he won the AAU national uh, amateur title in New York City in 1942. He wrestled professionally for 20 years and uh, he died in the ring as a matter of fact in Lubbock, Texas in 1969 and uh, I was always very, very proud of my father and wanted to follow in his footsteps and you might say that uh, professional wrestling has, you know, put a roof over my head and clothes on my back all my life so it's been my whole life and uh, my goal like every other wrestler that, that enters that ring is to someday, you know, have a chance to become maybe the world heavyweight champion and right now I've taken one big step towards that goal by gaining the North American heavyweight title and uh, I won this title one year ago from Fritz von Erich and since that time I've wrestled all over the United States in Japan, Australia, Canada defending this title and I've come here to prove to myself and to the wrestling world to that that I am worthy of maintaining this belt because uh, 
this is the finest competition of professional wrestling right here. You've got uh, greats. You've got Greg Valentine. You've got uh, Tony Gurria. You've got uh, uh, living legend Bruno San Martino. These wrestling names are known worldwide, and that's why I'm here to compete with the best to prove to myself that I'm worthy of being the North American heavyweight title holder. Well, in mentioning some of the competition, uh, you hear a lot of scuttlebutt rumors and things of that nature in professional wrestling, and uh, there are a lot of people out gunning for that title. They see this uh, good-looking young man coming into the squared circle here in the World Wide Wrestling Federation and taking on all comers, and uh, a lot of people are going to be taking some shots at you. And we could go on and on with the list, but uh, Captain Louis Albano has a whole stable of wrestlers that would like to have the opportunity to wrestle Ted DiBiase. How do you feel about wrestling? The competition here, we'll mention the Valiant brothers, all three of them, Jimmy, Johnny, and Jerry. Well, I tell you, Vince, you know, I got, you know, any, any good uh, professional, no matter what his business is, right away he's going to kind of look things over and see what that competition is. And uh, I've watched all of these gentlemen that you just mentioned, the Valiant brothers, uh, Captain Lou Albano and his whole crew, and uh, uh, you know, upon watching them, I've uh, I've noticed their tactics. I know how they go about things. I've noticed right off the bat that uh, winning is number one uh, to uh, Captain Lou Albano, regardless of how he does it. I saw that right away, and uh, like my father told me a long time ago, you know, sometimes you have to throw that rule book out the window, and you know, sometimes you wrestle a snake, so you got to get on your belly and crawl like one with them. And if that's what I've got to do to, to hold on to the belt. You know, I can I can go in there and I can wrestle scientifically, or I can go in there and fight if I have to, and I will. If you have your druthers, which do you prefer? I'd rather go in there and wrestle scientifically and abide by the rules because I feel like uh, if I do that, then one of my hand goes in the air. I feel like I've done it honestly, and uh, I can walk out of the ring with my head up, hold it proud. Seems to me that it would be difficult adapting uh, your style to that of the individuals that you will be facing here in the World Wide Wrestling Federation. All three Valiant brothers, for instance, have individual styles, not to mention the, the rather unique characteristics of a bulldog brower or a Greg Valentine. That's very true. Uh, all of these gentlemen are very capable wrestlers. So they, they wouldn't be here. They wouldn't be wrestling here. And uh, every wrestler that you step in that ring with, as far as I'm concerned, has his own style. And it is up to me as a champion and, and just as a wrestler to watch these men and watch all of their moves and uh, be aware of what their, uh, what their capabilities are, what their faults are, and what their strong points are when you step in that ring. So I'm here. I'm ready to wrestle. I'm glad to be here, and uh, I hope to uh, hold on to this belt. Thank you very much. Ted DiBiase. The following match is set for one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing first the manager, the manager of champions, the Grand Wizard of Wrestling. And his protege from Seattle, Washington, weighing 246 pounds, Greg Valentine. And his opponent from Pahuska, Oklahoma, weighing 248 pounds, Chief Jay Strongbow. This should be quite a match. Strongbow against Greg Valentine. Here we go. Greg Valentine with Jay Strongbow against the rope there, trying to work on his left arm. Strongbow throws in a shoulder block to the midsection and really caught Mr. Valentine by surprise, I think. The Grand Wizard uh, shouting something at Jay Strongbow. Valentine backing Strongbow to the corner. Very clever, crafty wrestler, this Greg Valentine. Not to take, obviously, anything away from Chief J. Strongbow. Strongbow, good chop for chop, going to work on Valentine. Strongbow coming out the rope. Strongbow with a knee lap. Down goes Greg Valentine.
And the fans, this capacity crowd, yes, sir, they're with Jay Strongbow all the way. Ah, oh, Valentine in control. Jay Strongbow whipped to the ropes, headed off. Over goes Strongbow. Take down by Valentine. Valentine in control. Valentine kick out by Strongbow. Strongbow now sending Valentine to the ropes, coming off. And Strongbow landing with the foot to the midsection. Another one. A knee lift at Valentine, having his problem. Strong ball being pushed back to the rope. And we'll have a clean break here, or at least uh, referee Dick Worley will call for one. Strong ball with one foot on the outside, off balance, and Greg Valentine goes to work on Chief Jay Strong ball. Valentine. Pouring it on, Chief J. Strongbow. Greg Valentine working on the legs. Now, we've seen this many, many times in the past as a prelude to Valentine attempting the figure four leg lock. But I doubt very seriously. There he goes. A tip to figure four leg back. And Strongbow kicks out. <laughs> Valentine wasting no time and going for the figure four leg lock. But Strongbow alertly able to kick out. Strongbow gets ahead of steam. Greg Valentine whipped to the buckle, and he really went flying in. And listen to the fans. Strong boy hitting up another hit of steam. Strong boy hitting off the ropes. Look at that over. Jump to the top. Valentine in trouble as Strongbow gets him a double chop. Valentine falling into Jay Strongbow gets a run. Strongbow being belted by Greg Valentine. Valentine working on the side now, continuing to hammer in the back. Jay Strongbow to our path. Strongbow headed off the ropes. Another knee left. Valentine meeting Strongbow head on. A double tomahawk chop. For a cover. One, two, almost three. But Valentine alertly. Lays the right leg across the bottom rope. And he left again. And the Grand Wizard pleading with Greg Valentine. Valentine headed off the rope. And the speaker hold it could be over. Valentine going down. No, wait, look at Strongbow. Back to the steeper hold. Valentine crawling up on the rope. Oh, no. The referee, Dick Worley, upside down, landing on his head. Strong bows out. Greg Valentine appears to be out as well. What the, the Grand Wizard just grabbed the water pitcher from the broadcast booth. The Wizard throwing water on Valentine. Valentine still dazed, strongbow dazed. The 
Valentine recuperating. Valentine toward for the figure four leg lock. Valentine has it. Greg Valentine has the figure four leg lock on Jay Strongbow. Strongbow yelling. Strongbow has Strongbow submits. Valentine still hugging on. Sabisco coming in to break it up here. He's turning around. And Strongbow is screaming. Valentine will not release the hold. Strongbow is absolutely screaming. Monsoon, go to Monsoon. Pulse. Greg Valentine with a water pitcher. Finally, the hold broken. Pandemonium has broken loose here at this arena. The Grand Wizard leading Greg Valentine out of the squared circle. And Strongbow is in intense pain, obviously. The doctor now coming in. The doctor taking a look at the left leg. Strongbow just in anguish, as you can obviously see. Let's get the official time if we can. I don't know. They're trying to put Strongbow on the stretcher, and Jay Strongbow can hardly stand still. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the time of the match, seven minutes, seven seconds, and the winner, Greg Valentine. Valentine announced as the winner by submission. And this crowd does not like that Strongbow. Strongbow still reeling in anguish. On the stretcher. A number of principals now, the doctor taking a look at Strongbow. Oh, Strongbow can't even stand still. He must really be, he is in, in such anguish. We're gonna put Strongbow on the stretcher, and obviously he's gonna need a lot of medical assistance. Remember, this hold just reinstituted here in the Worldwide Wrestling Federation, just reinstated several weeks ago. They're gonna take Jay Strongbow out. We'll have more wrestling action, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll have a follow-up, obviously, on the condition of Jay Strongbow. We shall return in a moment. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the next contest is set for one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing first the manager, the Hollywood Fashion Plate, uh, Classy ring Fred Lassie. Strongbow, the doctor has said he does not and want Strongbow moved one inch further than where he is right now. From Sicily, weighing and, uh, 241 pounds. Medical Tony assistance will be Russo. here very, very shortly. And his opponent, 258 pounds, the great Hossein Arab of Iran. Well, the match opening up here. A hush has fallen over this crowd, I can tell you that. Here we go with the action.
Hussein in total control over Tony Russo. In the corner, Hussein working on Tony Russo on the outside. The doctor and several of Strongbow's uh, friends, I think, are going to attempt to put a splint on the on one of the legs of Jay Strongbow. Hussein whipped to the ropes. Hussein now coming off. Times the elbow into Tony Russo. And the referee down. And it's over. Again, the doctor over taking a look at Jay Strongbow. Gorilla Monsoon over there trying to split that leg, I believe. Let's get the official time on this match. The time of the match, 1 minute 18 seconds, and your winner, the great Hossein Arab of Iran. Hossein Arab, the great Hossein, victorious. We shall return in a moment, ladies and gentlemen. This is the final event. It is set for one fall to the curfew. It is a special six-man tag team match. Introducing first the manager, Captain Louis Albano. Well, the principal is being introduced here again. And uh, his protege. And this sh should be quite Toronto, a six-man tag team Ontario, match. Canada, weighing 271 pounds. The but I'll tell you, squad everyone's attention in this arena power. is not really on the six-man match. And I don't believe partner, it's on Jay Strongbow. Total combined weight. 543 pounds from Strongbow waiting City. for the ambulance Gentlemen, to arrive. It seems Tom like it's taken uh, an eternity to get here. And their opponents from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 263 pounds, Dominic DiNucci. And his partner from Auckland, New Zealand, 245 pounds, Tony Garia. And their partner. From Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 241 pounds, Larry Zabisco. So there we have the principles of being introduced here in the six-man tag team match, and here we go with the action. Johnny Valiant tagging his brother Jerry Valiant. Wide open Dominic Tenucci and a chop to the throat there. Jerry Valiant continuing the hammer on Dominic Tenucci. Again, Jay Strongbow being attended to by the doctor. Larry Zabisco against Jerry Valiant. And of course, Jerry Valiant surprising uh, the Worldwide Wrestling Federation by showing up here again. Takedown by Zabisco. Well, I'll tell you, notwithstanding the significance of this six-man tag team match, you really, Greg Valentine, I mean, to do what he did to Jay Strongbow. Valentine, of course, through the whip, the uh, months here has uh, broken uh, leg after leg, really. And it was Valentine and the Grand Wizard, his manager, Jay Strongbow again. Uh, went to bat for themselves, really, when the hold was barred, the figure four leg lock was barred at one time, but not for long. Boy, I don't know if this ambulance is ever gonna get here. I know Jay Strongbow thinks this is an, an eternity. Tony Gurria. 
ramming down into the arm area of Johnny Valiant. Coming off, and Tony Gurria catches Jerry Valiant and Bulldog Brower as well. Strong go over with the doctor who's given orders he is not to be moved. Lou Albano brought the uh, broadcast booth. Strongbow being attended to. Uh, I know we keep making reference to Jay Strongbow, but uh, you really feel sorry for Jay Strongbow. That wet spot in the ring, reminiscent of the Grand Wizard, of course, grabbing the water pitcher from the broadcast booth as it was, and then, of course, throwing the water on. You see that? Gentleman Jerry Valiant, baby, 275 pounds. That's Jerry Valiant, baby, the man's like close encounters of the ninth guy, baby. You can bet Lou Albano and the Valiants, and uh, for that matter, surely Greg Valentine and many others are happy about the condition of Jay Strongbow at the moment. With the vast majority of the fans in the Worldwide Wrestling Federation, this is a sad moment. Guerrilla reversing things on Johnny Valiant. Strongbow waiting for medical assistance. Back body drop by Dominic Tenucci. Full account, two and no, that's all he can get. Dominic Tenucci wide open, but look at that, alertly ducking. Locked in the ropes there, Jerry Valley, and Dominic stretches the proboscis a bit. Strongbow waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for the medical assistance, waiting for the ambulance to arrive. Johnny Valiant rammed into his brother Jerry. Conspicuous by his absence, Jimmy Valiant this week. Count. It could be over. Count of one, two. No. Jerry Valiant laying it on Dominic Danucci, who has proven to be a tough competitor. Dominic. Tagging Zabisco, who's fresh as a daisy. Here he comes. Bulldog Brower comes in to break up things. Pandemonium breaking loose. Tony Garea comes over. John Valiant steps through now. Bulldog Brower. The one-man riot squad, Bulldog Brower, in control now. Scoops up Larry Zabisco. Brower now, backing himself the rope, climbing up on those ropes. Brower, no, you miss. The ambulance, I think, is arriving. Finally, for Jay Strongbow, thank God, the ambulance is finally here.
there's the ambulance finally arriving. I know Jay Strongbow, that's a welcome sight to Jay Strongbow. He's uh, in tremendous pain as it is. We apologize uh, if we're not picking up some of the action in the uh, in the squared circle in this six-man match, but we're opting to stay with, uh, with Jay Strongbow. Strongbow, you can see him just, uh, he's one of the great competitors, ladies and gentlemen, in my view, and, and I think in everyone's view. He's one of the all-time great competitors. And uh, to see Jay Strongbow carried on a stretcher like this in intense pain as a, as a result of Greg Valentine and his actions, it's, it's uh, to say it's despicable is, is not to describe really what's happening here. Finally, the attendants have arrived, and again, forgive us, for not showing you what's happening in the six-man match. Jay Strongbow now will get the attention he, he needs. The doctor there in the corduroy jacket has stayed with Jay Strongbow, as has Gorilla Monsoon. They've stayed with him all the way through this thing. And now it's gonna be a touchy thing now to put Jay Strongbow on that stretcher without really making that leg hurt. When you lift it up like that, even though it's splinted, Strongbow being helped, finally. They've got to, they've got to get him, well, they'll get themselves together here, the, the medical crew. They're gonna try and scoop Strongbow up. Uh, using the stretcher he's on, I believe, so as not to disturb that leg. Try and keep that leg uh, as motionless as possible. Matt's still progressing here, the six-man tag team match. can't see what's happening now with Strongbow. Got a lot of people around him, and I know, uh, well, let's see now. They're gonna make a move, and I hope you don't hear Jay Strongbow scream. They are so cautious, the attendants are, because they don't want to injure that leg anymore. Bulldog Brower in there with uh, Dominic Danucci, Larry Zabisco, and the referee having a hard time maintaining order. The doctor and his uh, medical crew making certain they have everything together here. They do not want to injure that leg anymore, and it's already injured, and from the looks of things, whenever a competitor like Jay Strongbow uh, is in a position like this, you know it must be a very, very serious injury. Looks like now they're gonna, they're moving a stretcher over much closer to the, to the uh, so the stretcher Jay Strongbow is on, they're just gonna put one on top of the other, I think, yes. That's what they're gonna do. What a terrible way for a competitor like Jay Strongbow to leave an arena. Jay Strongbow normally leaves any arena with his head held high, and usually in a victorious fashion. Such is not the case at this moment. The six-man match still progressing. They're strapping Jay Strongbow in now. All right, finally, Jay Strongbow. Jay Strongbow being carried 
to the waiting ambulance, and Jay Strongbow gets a hand here from this capacity crowd. Jay Strongbow, I believe, in the ambulance now. I'm not sure. No, no, he's not. We're still going to have to lift him up and put him in there. As we said before, this is no way for any competitor, any professional wrestling, not to mention oh, on the caliber of Jay Strongbow to leave in an arena. And this certainly gives uh, more credibility to uh, those who believe that that figure four leg lock should be barred. Valentine, it was Valentine. Well, you won't have to describe exactly what happened. Everyone knows it. Valentine applied the leg lock. Jay Strongbow was uh, semi-conscious at best, if not completely unconscious. The wizard wakes up for Valentine with that pitcher of water. Inside the ambulance, Jay Strongbow, who will get the medical attention that he needs. Well, we'll stay with the six-man tag team match, but again, uh, regardless of the action here and what should prove to be a, a great match and probably is, we opted to stay with Jay Strongbow, and surely uh, you really have to give credit to the likes of Jay Strongbow. Any, well, let's not belabor the point. Tenochi being manhandled by the Valiant Brothers, Johnny and Jerry. Dominic, who has proven himself to be a tough competitor in not only in individual matches, but in tag team matches. If you will recall, it was Dominic Canucci at one time uh, was considered a, well, well, he was a current co-holder of the tag team title at one time. Oh, the Valiant Brothers in trouble. Oh, Dominic coming on strong. Things reversed. Uh-oh. Things reversed again. Brower. Dick the Bulldog. Brower levels Johnny Valiant. Zabisco going to work on the far side over there against Jerry Valiant. And Danucci with Johnny Valiant here. Close at hand. Johnny whipped into the twos, Larry Zabisco. Tag made and gentlemen, Jerry Valiant, if you would. Stepping through now, getting some momentum coming off those ropes. The knee to the midsection. Tony Guerrero wants to help out, but Guerrero will be ushered back by the referee. Wide open, Dominic Canucci, both Valiant brothers a moment ago, pounding away on Dominic. Guerrilla and Dominic, all three in the square circle. The referee having a tough time maintaining order. And Jerry Valiant locked in the ropes there with no place to go. Dick the Bulldog, Brower takes a shot by Denochi. Another one. Brower likes it. Danucci knocked through the ropes and out on the outside. Not the place to be. The Valiant Brothers make a rush for Dominic. And Dominic's making a rush right back. Oh, 
Dominic and Bulldog Brower scoring off now. Oh, wait a minute, the bell has rung. But we're still gonna stay with this. The referee who had a tough time maintaining order uh, at any moment in that six-man tag team match is certainly having a, even a tougher time right now. Jerry Valiant being held by Zabisco. And it's one Valiant brother against three principals. No, here comes Jerry now, being ushered out by Captain Louis Albano. Wrestling fans, that match went to the curfew, the official decision, a draw. A draw, the official decision. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's where the action we saw earlier, the Nochi chasing the Valiant brothers, Johnny and Jerry, back away a bit. Next week, our feature match, we'll have Victor Rivera and Baron Mikel Sakuna joining forces again. They'll meet the combination of Steve Travis and Flying Fred Curry, and we'll also certainly have an update on the condition of Chief Jay Strongbow.